Hello everyone. In today's video, we are dealing with simplification techniques on fractions, which are very useful in all competitive examinations. Before looking at the simplification techniques, let me define three different kinds of fractions we normally come across. Proper fractions, improper fractions, and mixed fractions. So what's a proper fraction? A fraction in which numerator is less than the denominator. For example, 2 over 3. 2 is the numerator, 3 is the denominator. And this is an example of proper fraction. And all proper fractions are less than 1. Improper fraction is 1 with the denominator being bigger than the numerator. For example, 4 over 3 or 8 over 5. These are all examples of improper fractions. And an improper fraction is always greater than 1. Then comes mixed fractions. Mixed fractions will have both integer and usually a proper fraction. For example, take this improper fraction 8 divided by 5. See how many times does 5 go in 8? Once. And what is the remainder you have? 3. That 3 you write like this. 1 and 3 over 5. See basically this is what I have done. It goes once, 5, remainder is 3, 1 is the quotient, 3 is the remainder and 5 is the divisor. This basically means when you write a mixed fraction, it means 1 plus 3 over 5. There are different techniques to simplify fractions. One of them is cross multiplication, then converting into the same denominator and then there is LC method. There are a few more I will show in course of our discussion on simplifying fractions. See, which method to be used depends on the fraction we need to simplify. To help you understand the concepts better, let me begin with a few simple examples. Look at these two fractions. 2 over 5 to be added to 3 over 8. See, in cross multiplication, what do you do? You will cross multiply 2 and 8. Then you will cross multiply 5 and 3 and the denominator you write 5 multiplied by 8. This is how you add two fractions. 2 multiplied by 8, 16, 5 multiplied by 3, 15, 5 multiplied by 8, 40. This on simplification, 31 over 40. Now supposing you are subtracting 3 over 8 from 2 over 5, we can use the same method, cross multiplication. First you multiply 2 and 8 like we did before. And the connecting sign will be instead of plus, minus. Then 5 multiplied by 3. The whole divided by denominator, no change. Like before, 5 multiplied by 8. So this will be 60 minus 50 divided by 40, which is 1 over 40. Now the same problem, I'll simplify using converting into the same denominator. These are the fractions we had. 2 over 5, 3 over 8. See, for 5 and 8, 40 is a common multiple. So you convert the denominators 5 and 8 into 40. So what do you do for that? When you multiply 5 by 8, you get 40. So the value of the fraction will change if you don't multiply the numerator also by the same number. So I'm doing that here. Then the next one, to get 40 here, you need to multiply by 5. So I'm multiplying by 5, the numerator also. And what do you have? 16 by 40 plus 15 divided by 40. Here you have the same denominator. When you have the same denominator, you can just combine the numerators. And this is what you get. 31 over 40. In the case of subtraction, instead of plus, you will be putting minus and do the rest of it as you have done here. Now let's look at the next case. Where you have one of the fractions given as a just an integer. For example, 4 minus 3 over 5. See, what is the normal method like we discussed here? There is a shorter method which I will show you. But before that, using the normal method discussed before, 4 is nothing but 4 divided by 1. We will do the cross multiplication. 4 multiplied by 5. Then connecting sign is minus. So 3 multiplied by 1 divided by product of the denominators, which is 1 multiplied by 5. This is 20 minus 3 divided by 
5, which equals 17 by 5. Now, this is an improper fraction with the numerator being bigger. So, you can convert that into a mixed fraction. How do you go about that? 5 goes in 17 how many times? 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. And the remainder is 2. That 2 you write here. Then the device of 5. And this is the final answer. This is a slightly time consuming process. There is a better approach. Okay, let me write the problem again. 4 minus 3 over 5. See what we do in the shortcut. You subtract 1 from 4. You have 3. Then look at the fraction. See for this technique. The second fraction to be subtracted has to be a proper fraction. Then only this method works. This fraction is 3 divided by 5. What we do is take the difference between these two numbers. Numerator and denominator. That is 2. That divided by this 5. That is the technique. So what did I do? You write an integer which is 1 less than 4 and that is 3. Then the difference between these two numbers 3 and 5 is 2. That 2 I am writing. Then you write just 5. Okay, let me do another problem. 7 minus 5 divided by 9. So what did I say? You will write 1 less than 7. That is 6. Then take the difference between these two. 5 and 9 that is 4. Then you write 9. This is the final answer. Can you see? This will take just a second or two. Now you might be wondering what is the answer to see I have considered only subtraction instead of minus if I put plus this I have already shown you the meaning of this is 7 5 by 9. There is nothing to be done. Okay. Only when there is a minus sign some simplification is needed which if done this way you can finish it off in just one or two seconds. In all these cases in these shortcuts the second fraction has to be a proper fraction. Now let me look at the case when the second fraction is an improper fraction. Look at this case. 4 minus 8 over 3. See the fraction to be subtracted is an improper fraction because of the numerator being bigger than the denominator. In this case in the first step what we do is convert this improper fraction into a mixed fraction. See, for that what do you do? 3 goes in 8 twice. 3 multiplied by 2 6 and 8 minus 6 2. 2 is the remainder. That 2 you write here. Basically, you can do it in your mind. I'm just showing you to make it clearer. To convert 8 over 3 into a mixed fraction, you divide 8 by 3, goes twice, then 6, 2 is the remainder. This is the quotient. This is the remainder. This is the divisor. That's all. Now, how to move further? See, unlike the previous one, in the fraction to be subtracted, it is a mixed fraction. So, you split this minus. What is the meaning of 2 and 2 by 3, 2 plus 2 by 3 this is the meaning of a mixed fraction. This will be 4 minus, see, there are two terms here, minus to be distributed to both of them. So you have minus 2, minus 2 over 3. You simplify this first, 4 minus 2, 2, then minus 2 over 3. And this we have already discussed before. What do you do when you have an integer minus a proper fraction? You write 1 less than the integral part, which is 2 minus 1. And that's 1. Then take the difference between these two, which is 1. Then write the denominator here. This will be the final answer. This you can extend to 3, 4, any number of fractions. Okay, to make it clearer, I'll do one more problem. 8, 1 over 3, plus 6, 1 over 5, minus 5, 3 over 5. So if you have a few mixed fractions to be simplified, in the first step what we do is take all the integral parts 8, 6 and 5 together. Here it is plus, so I'm right, putting plus. Here it is minus, so minus. Collect all the fractions. See the meaning of this is 8 plus 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 plus this again plus 1 by 5. Maybe if you want you can put a bracket. Then what is the meaning of 5, 3 by 5? 5 plus 3 divided by 5. So minus to be distributed, one term written here, the other term will be minus 3 over 5. Now 8 plus 6, 14, 14 minus 5, 9. Now you have three fractions with the different denominators, at least in the first and second, the denominators are different. So what do you do? You will convert them all into say 15. 15 is a common multiple of 3, 5, 5. Basically this is a slightly different version of LCM method. But this is slightly easier than the LCM method. 
So how do you convert 1 over 3 into a fraction with 15 being the denominator? To get 15, you need to multiply by 5 here. So numerator also to be multiplied with 5. Or the second one, to get 15 from 5, we multiply by 3. So the numerator also to be multiplied by 3. And in the last one, to get 15 from 5, you multiply by 3. So the numerator also to be multiplied by 3. This equals. Now you have the same denominator. You can just add and subtract the numerators. Before that, there is a 9 here. So 5 plus 3 minus 9 divided by 15. 9, 8 minus 9 is minus 1. Okay, let me first write here minus 1 divided by 15. This equals, see, plus minus is minus and 1 over 15. Now, how do you proceed further? This is the case we have already discussed before. You have an integer, then there is a proper fraction to be subtracted. What do you do? You write 1 less than 9, which is 8. Then, what is the difference between 1 and 15? 14. That 14 you write here. Then, you write, just write 15. And this will be the final answer. So we have done so far only addition and subtraction. Let's move to multiplication and division. Let's look at this case. 3 over 5 multiplied by 9 over 7 multiplied by 49 over 90. See, all you have to do is cancel the common factors. 3 will go 30 times. 7 goes 7 times. Here also you can 3 times. Here 10. 3 multiplied by 7, 21. Everything else is gone. Here you have 5 multiplied by 10. is 50. It's a very simple case. And there is no shortcut for this. This is the only way you can go about it. In the next case, let's multiply a mixed fraction with an integer. For example, 99 and 17 over 23 multiplied by 23. See, the meaning of the mixed fraction is this. 99 plus 17 over 23. That is this one. Put a bracket. There are two terms. So bracket is essential here. Or else you are likely to multiply only one term. This one. You won't multiply by this also. So you have to put a bracket when dealing with simplifications of this kind. Then what do you do? You are distributing 23 to both the numbers. 99 multiplied by 23 plus 17 over 23 multiplied by 23. To make it easy, you can use a shortcut here. 99 is 100 minus 1. Then 23. These two will cancel out. And you will have 17. And this one is what? 23 multiplied by 100 is 2300. 23 multiplied by 1. There is a minus sign, minus 23 and plus 17 equals 2300 minus 23 plus 17. As you know, you take the difference between these two numbers. If there are differing signs like plus and minus, and then you put the sign of the bigger number, which is minus, and that is 6. And this equals 2294. This is the final answer. There is a possible mistake you can make when simplifying 99, 17, 23 multiplied by 23. There is a mistake you can make cutting like this. And this is not equal to 99. This is a mistake some often make. So don't cancel like this. You expand it like this and then you multiply each of the terms by 23. There is a correct approach. Now let me show you how to handle division in fractions. For example, look at this problem. 8 over 7 divided by 2 over 5, 1 over 5. Before coming to this problem, look at this one. You have say 4 divided by 3 divided by 7 divided by 3. How do you handle this? Before looking at this one, which involves 3 fractions, let me look at a simple case where you have just 2 fractions. See, to divide one fraction by another fraction, what we do is, you write the first fraction as it is, then take the reciprocal of the second fraction. Reciprocal means flipping numerator and denominator. This is the 3 over 7 is the reciprocal of 7 over 3. And with that reciprocal, you multiply. You will get the final answer. 
these two will cancel out and you have 4 divided by 7. The same principle you can extend to 3 or any number of fractions. So what do you do here? The first fraction you write as it is, then multiply it by the reciprocal. Then there is one more. There also you do the same thing. 5 over 1. That's all. Now if there is a common factor, we will, yeah, there is a common thing. 4 and 2, 25 multiplied by 4, 100 divided by 7. And this you can convert into mixed fraction. See, 7 goes in 10 once. 3 is the remainder. 30 in 37 goes 4 times. And the remainder is 2. 2 over 7. See, if you are not clear about this term, let me write it. Normal division. You are dividing 100 by 7. Once it goes, then 7. Remainder 3. 30. Then 7 goes 4 times. Then 4 into 7, 28, and you have 2 as the remainder. So 14 is the quotient, 2 is the remainder, 7 is the divisor. And this is the final answer. Now using the different techniques we are used in simplifying problems here, you may try to work out the problem I am setting here. 50, 2 over 3, plus 3, 1 over 5, minus 4, 4 over 3, plus 10. You simplify this fraction, making use of all the different strategies applied here and mention the answer in the comment section. If you found the video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.